Hey guys, welcome back to Gummin' Arts. My name's Joe Barlow, and today I've got another project deconstruction for you. If you've been watching the series so far, you know I've been watching every single Marvel film and attempting to recreate a visual effect from every single one. This week I watched the first Guardians of the Galaxy, and I'm attempting to recreate the Power Stone scene from the end of the film. All of these videos can be seen over on my Instagram before I create the project deconstructions here on YouTube. So if you're not following me already, make sure you check out my Instagram link in the description. If you've not seen the clip already though, don't worry, here it is. So Guardians of the Galaxy, this is the shot we'll be imitating today. This is where Peter Quill has the power stone and we've got all this swirling energy uh, and eventually his face sort of breaking apart here. This is just all the effects of the Power Stone absorbing him. So we're gonna do two shots. We're gonna do this one here and also this one here. We're gonna skip the uh, the Gamora thing in the middle there. Um, so let's just take a better look at these. We've got the energy in his hands sort of blowing off um, sort of smoke occasionally in these sort of sparks. We've got all the swirling stuff around him, a load of sparks happening, as well as a little bit of sort of face uh, disintegration happening in this early shot. So let's just give that a quick watch. We've got all that happening. And then as we move on to the second shot that we're going to be doing, where Peter Quill's face is uh, is disintegrating, what we have is these cracks moving up of his face and a quite obvious sort of um, gap in his face where, where his, his skin or, or his body is, is slowly disintegrating and blowing away from his face here. We've also got those sort of deep black eyes uh, and sort of cracks all the way up his face as well as a desaturated looking sort of skin tone and of course all that energy swirling around him as well in this shot. So let's take a look. So here we are over in After Effects and we've got shot one and we've got shot two. A lot of things do copy over sort of background and sparks. So I'm going to go over those mostly in shot one. And then in shot two, I'll talk more about how I achieved this sort of disintegration of the face because there's a whole 3D object thing going on there that's quite interesting. So we start with the base footage as usual and we've got me here standing against the wall and I'm sort of just gripping my fists and looking up as that energy sort of flows through my body from my hand all the way up my neck and into my face um, similar to what we saw in Guardians of the Galaxy. So I've gone ahead and applied a rotoscope to that. I was having real problems with the uh, legs here but as they don't move I just masked them out a little bit later and I also added a few refined edges as uh, I was having some issues with the uh, with the edges uh, when I took it into the background. So that's the footage we're going to be using today. So the layer we see here a couple of times is that rotoscope. Um, it's sort of the base layer we used, but we used it in a couple of different ways. Um, and that is to achieve this sort of look. We obviously wanted uh, it to sort of fade from darkness. We don't really see a lot of Peter's, um, Star-Lord's bottom half, but we do see more of his top half. So that's what we've got here. I've, I've, I've run masks through that so we don't see that. I've also got this uh, edge glow, which I've used in previous videos. Um, if I could find the right layer, then I'll uh, just quickly remind you of how I achieved that. So you'll see we've got a couple of different layers of me inside the Brighton layer. And uh, what that is, is that inner glow, which is that sort of edge purple. Um, and this is sort of a, meant to be a shine off of the power stone in my hand a little bit later on. And then we've got me and me again. Uh, and this time is just to sort of brighten up this side and the hand where the glows are going to go uh, when I'm holding the power stone. So let's just see those again uh, in action. We've got those applied as an ad as well as some other stuff. It's kind of messy how I've made this sort of base me but um the way that i wanted it to sort of interact and blend with the background it sort of meant i had to do this to it um we've got those in add and we've got me in normal and me in normal here and all together it makes this so as we play it through you can see a couple of different flashes going on um, and what we have is this top me layer is acting as uh, sort of a flash and we've just made that slightly brighter using a color correct there and some hue and saturation and then just turning the opacity up and down um, to match the background that I put in later. We've got that brighten layer that we've just looked at below that so that's just sort of those edge glows and a bit more of my face to make that brighten up 
And then a little lower than that, we've got the two me layers here, which are sort of acting more of a base layer. Um, I'm assuming I needed to separate those because of the things between them. So the next thing I wanna show you is the background layer. This obviously drove the, um, the light flashes on my body. Uh, whenever that sort of flashed, that needed to interact with me. And some of you might recognize this um, as a video co-pilot tutorial. So here it is playing through. I've made a few tweaks to it. Obviously I've made it purple to sort of match the background, but what we've got is that sort of smoke and that lightning uh, bleeding through the cloud layers there. Um, I've not done too much to that, so I won't go into that. I'll, uh, I'll let you go ahead and watch the tutorial on how to make that yourselves. Link will be in the description for that. Um, but that's that's pretty much what I used in the background. Once that's been come together, I have added some hue and saturation as well as a camera lens blur just to make it a little bit more out of focus and uh, slightly less brighter. But what that leaves us with is those flashes and you'll see the interaction with me there, which I've matched with that top me layer. God, that's confusing. Um, and the next thing we want to do is add all those sparks. Now to do that, I've gone ahead and used Snowfall uh, mixed with glow and camera lens blur again and I've just used these throughout There's a couple of different layers with this on and what this gives us if I just solo this layer Is this cool looking particles flying past the screen similar to what we saw in the actual video So if I go ahead and turn a few more of these on we've got them layered throughout the scene So some are behind some are in front some are large some are moving one direction some are moving another It makes it look absolutely chaotic and if we go ahead and put my me layers back on As well as that background we start to have something that looks a little bit similar to the Guardians of the Galaxy shot so just above this snowfall layer, I have this black solid, which I've gone ahead and masked just to sort of hide some of my legs there. Um, again, this is uh, an attempt to sort of blend my body with that cloud layer, um, as I didn't have any form of sort of ground uh, that I could keep in existence. I assume they shot this with sort of a green background, but the stage in front uh, might have been real. I'm not sure. I've not seen those uh, that footage, but... Um, Unfortunately, I didn't have uh, any floor I wanted to keep, so I went ahead and just sort of hid my feet there. Moving up the composition, another layer, we have a optical flare, and this is the power stone in my hand. I've just got this following my hand through the scene. I've built this flare just to make it look like it's bleeding through my fingers a little bit. And that optical flare paired with this layer, which is a solid, which I've just feathered uh, to add a bit of sort of a hot spot, a bit of a glow to it there. That gives us the power stone inside of this scene. Now the next thing I want to focus on is these few layers down here and this is a particle jumping out of the power stone. You remember it from the shot from the beginning of the video um, and I want to try and capture this. So what I went ahead and did was start by adding a optical flare bouncing out of the power stone there and you'll see it fly across screen like so. And of course I needed to add some smoke to this and the way I achieved that is just by creating uh, some black solids, adding a mask drawing out the path of the uh, optical flare, duplicating it a few times and adding a stroke and a roughen edges, mixing those together and that gave us this black smoke sort of flying out like so. This does happen pretty quick within the shot, uh, but it is there. It's just something extra I decided to add. So the next couple of things I've got are just some assets that I've thrown on to make it look a bit closer to the original scene. So I've got these green trails here. I've got two of these. Um, they happen at different points in the video. I think we'll be able to sort of see one here um, They're kind of just smoky things happening uh, in the background I think one goes in front of me one goes behind me in different directions um, Just to make it look all swirly and chaotic and smoky and with that I've also added this smoke layer. Uh, this was originally some white smoke So I've inverted it and that's just sort of cover the entire scene this does make things pretty dark, but what I've done is I've duplicated that very back layer of the smoke flashes, and then I've added the transfer mode to screen, and that brightens things up a little bit more. We've got that camera lens blur again, and what that does, it gets us to here. The only other things on this layer at this point is another optical flare just off shot here, and some glow cracks. Now these glow cracks are something I bought over from uh, shot two, so I'll get into those in a little bit, but these are just placed on my neck afterwards just to sort of show that this is beginning to absorb me. 
All right, so here we are in shot two. Now, the first thing I want to do is go ahead and just turn off anything that we've already gone over in shot one. So that's a lot of the background stuff and the sparks. I've got these on shy layers here, so I can uh, I can just hide these at a moment. But let's first make sure they're turned off so we don't have to uh, render them out every time we want to watch through this because uh, it, it's a pretty, pretty uh, bulky project, this one. There's a bit of 3D going on. Uh, and let's turn those off there so we are only left with what we want to actually take a look at here which is my face exploding let's have a quick watch of that and then we'll go into it in a little bit more detail right so here's a little bit of this scene playing out so what we've got is my face looking towards the camera and you'll see a lot of debris happening around me we got my eyes blacked out like we saw in guidance of the galaxy and we've got this sort of cheek missing um, so let's just take a look at how we did all of this because uh, it gets kind of complicated. So as always, we'll start with the base layer. Here I am just turning towards camera. Um, I've gone ahead and rotoscoped that. Of course, I've then added a color correction to make me purple and then a hue and saturation just to dull my skin tones a little bit more. So this is the base footage that we're gonna work from today. Uh, and we're gonna add some textures to this. We're gonna add those cracks, black out the eyes, and of course, um, blow up the side of my face. Now, the first thing I did was black out those eyes, and this is just some masks. I've also uh, put a mask around my nose just to sort of protect this corner here, especially if I just zoom in there, because it was gonna overlap and sort of start blocking out my nose. The uh, lower face level there, I've just added a fill, and I made that black just so uh, there is a background in there that matches the outline of my head. Um, so you don't just sort of see that smoky background behind me. So the next thing I'm gonna turn on is this ground crack here. Now this I've only done on the one eye. This one, uh, you don't really see it too much. So I, I just didn't uh, do that. It's a bit more sort of blown out later on anyway. And sort of all the other things going on is a bit more of a distraction. Uh, so this one was the only one that I've sort of focused on. I've added this ground crack layer. Um, and then added a camera lens blur to it, nothing much. Uh, that also tracks the eye, so when my face moves, it sort of sits on that eye socket. As well as this ground crack, I've also added some textures to my face and my neck. Now this is a texture, along with the ground crack from Video Copilot's Action Essentials. And with this, I've separated it, although it is the same texture, I've separated it because the rotation of my neck is slightly different from my face. So I just took two tracks for that and uh, just separated it out so uh, the motion sort of matched a bit better. And if we just have a quick playthrough of that, we can see what we've got there. So the next easiest thing to show are these glow cracks. And what we have is one that's quite blurry with a Gaussian blur on and uh, the other one with an ever so slight soft edge with the vector blur. And this is meant to be cracks in my skin that light is bleeding out of. So if we just go into this composition, you'll see what I've done is just drawn out a bunch of different shapes. And with them, I've gone ahead and played with the stroke. Uh, I've changed the taper so it sort of makes these pointed edges. Um, and we've got three on top and three below, and the three below are blurred as well. I've gone ahead and dropped those on my face and matched them up with the track that I did as well, that null three uh, down here. And that leaves us with these glows over the eyeball. So the only other thing left to show you is the actual um, piece of my face missing and all of the sort of debris coming off. And I've achieved this with a 3D scan of my face. Now this is from an app called Face App. You can scan your face in uh, and then buy it, I think for $1 um, or one pound. I'm not sure of the price now, but it was, you know, it was basically nothing. Um, and with that, you can get the 3D object sent to you uh, in a, a variety of different file formats. And once I got that sent to me, I took it over into Blender, ran it through a plugin that separate it into loads of different shapes and then once it was in after effects here with element 3d i was able to animate all of these different shapes uh to displace to give it this explosion so this first layer here is just what i bought in from blender and this was it just all sort of broken up but pieces are missing and this i used on shot two just to achieve a crack in my face um, I masked it out. You'll notice the movement of my head there. I've sort of tried to match the movement best I can uh, by eye. And uh, that means this crack 
can sort of sit on my face there and kind of match what's happening. I've of course added a camera lens blur just to sort of let it match the focus on that as well as the levels. And I've added the transfer mode to luminosity. I just thought this one made it look the, uh, the best. And that's how I've achieved that sort of missing face bit. The next part of that disintegration is this uh, blow up layer, which you'll see here. All of these bits of debris blowing out of my face. So what I did was create two separate face layers. One that's actually disintegrating with all these different pieces and one that is just sitting still there in the middle. And the reason I've done that is to sort of use it as a block. So if, uh, if bits are behind like that, then they aren't going to show up if I did a key later on. Um, this was sort of a, a last minute decision. I, I wasn't planning on doing it like this, but uh, it, was, it was the easiest way I could achieve that sort of uh, stuff happening behind my face without having to create two different renders of this explosion. So that's what that looks like. And what we also get if we watch this piece here is pieces coming out of my face. Um, there's a couple of different bits that does that and it, it does make it look like they're actually breaking off rather than just sort of flown around me. So of course added that to the composition and uh, that is how we achieve these pieces around us. Uh, if I then go ahead and open up these shy layers back on and turn any layers that need to be back on, back on. We got all of that debris and sparks flying around that we had before. The only addition to that is this ember layer. These are just some uh, slightly out of focus sparks in the foreground, uh, something that we didn't have in the previous shot, which takes us back to our final composition with that color correction, which I've matched with shot one. And that's our final shot. And that was my attempt at recreating the Power Stone scene from Guardians of the Galaxy. As mentioned at the start of the video, I am uploading these over on my Instagram first, so make sure you are following me over there. Make sure you've subscribed here and you won't miss a thing. Until next time though, thank you and goodbye.